So the Beethoven Violin Concerto was written in 1806 for his friend and colleague, Franz Clement, one of the leading violinists of his day. And Beethoven, perhaps a little chaotically, had left it late to present Clement with the solo part. And if you can believe that Franz Clement was almost sight reading in the first performance. Clement improvised a cadenza in between the first and second movement with his violin upside down, almost like a circus trick. If you look at performance practice, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's just what the composer intended or try and replicate, you know, the, the first performance. Well, imagine doing that these days with the Beethoven Violin Concerto. Of course, it's become one of the beloved violin concertos. We will be doing it a, a hybrid of um, so-called original instruments. We're certainly getting uh, bassoons from the time, flutes from the time, oboes from the time, clarinets from the time. And uh, this offers us a different hue to the sound um, than, you, than you get with modern instruments. What's incredible about the Fifth Symphony is that it is just about the most well-known motif let's call it a melody. And yet it's not really melodic in the sense that yesterday is melodic. It's more rhythm. When you look at it, those opening bars are, are quite clearly written. And when you hear it, it's, it's really hard to transcribe. You, you can argue about you know, what, what the composer intended, the sound of this, the delivery of it, the impact that you want to make. And it's in that very argument, arguing, debating with Beethoven, that I think you bring the piece to life. It's the contradictions, it's the paradoxes that you find in this bizarre music that keeps it alive.